Hello and welcome again to Our Digital Future. In our earlier episodes, we brought you reports on converging trends and cybersecurity. In this episode, we look at the positive changes that technology is delivering to the agricultural sector. This is Our Digital Future, brought to you by the Australian Information Industry Association and ASN Media. In our efforts to turn the tide on the world's problems of environmental degradation, species loss and climate change, there is a powerful and somewhat unexpected ally. A 2018 PwC report identified 80 ways in which AI technologies could be used to benefit the environment. In agricultural irrigation, advanced sensing automation and monitoring systems from Netafim are helping farmers produce more using less with a circular economy approach that closes the loop on the use of plastics. This report from Richard Brunsma and Michael Sexton. Increasing costs, tighter regulations, loss of farmland. Along with environmental challenges like water scarcity, it means improving efficiencies in all aspects of agriculture is more important than ever. It's a challenge that drives Netafim Australia, a local manufacturer and service provider that specialises in efficient and effective precision irrigation. Population is increasing. Uh, the availability of arable land globally is decreasing and water's the biggest limiting resource. So to do the most with what's available, you've got to do it as best as possible. So we believe, yeah, drip irrigation and the efficient use of irrigation to maximise profitability and production is the, is the way forward. Netafim invented drip irrigation and was established in Israel in 1965. Today, the company is the global leader in precision irrigation through its development, manufacture and supply of drippers and drip lines for almost all crops and topographies, sprinklers, valves, filters and more. So it's imperative we're putting on that irrigation to the right amount of supply. Starman Webster, Australia's largest producer of walnuts, pecans, almonds and macadamias, utilises Netafim irrigation on its properties around Australia to help meet its sustainability objectives. We're very conscious on how we monitor water use in our orchards and the Netafim products allow us to apply exactly the right amount of water to the tree's requirements. So we're not overwatering, we're not creating runoff. Measured water use means wetlands and local wildlife on this property are also protected. Netafim innovations deliver consistent water quantities to each plant. It also utilises a process called fertigation, where fertiliser is mixed with the water delivered to the crop. Depending on the fertiliser applied, whether it's a nitrogen based or whether it's a blend, uh, the efficiencies that can be gained through fertigation are massive. It means we've got less machinery out in the paddocks. We're actually applying fertiliser directly under the trees. It certainly is a, is a very effective way to putting out certain products, so yeah, it works well for us. Significantly less fertiliser is required and the drip line eliminates environmental damage from runoff, leaching or loss of nitrogen to the atmosphere. Digital technology enables convenient online monitoring and operation of the irrigation systems. Netafim's hardware operates in sync with the data collected on the property. And those insights come from a range of different mediums. It could come from satellites or imagery, from soil moisture, from sensors on farm. I mean, the, the sole objective is to give greater insights into what that plant is actually requiring from a water or a fertiliser uh, perspective. About 70, yeah, 76 PSI. We're the conduit between the production of really good insights or data uh, from a digital farming perspective and the application of that water on farm. Efficient water and fertiliser delivery is one thing, but Netafim also aims to reduce any ongoing environmental impacts. So we've got a recoil program which we implemented in the mid-2000s and that program is to go on farm and recoil drip line which has been uh, at the end of its life. This property alone has around 2,000 kilometres of drip line. Netafim works with several processes to help recycle a product. 
The used drip line behind me is headed to Adelaide. So this is where the old drip line ends up, being brought here to a recycling plant in Adelaide. It'll be unloaded off this truck, shredded and pelletised, and sent back to Netifem, who will use it to make more irrigation products. And in doing so, they close the loop, the life cycle of plastic. The process is carried out at a seven hectare facility run by Recycling Plastics Australia. RPA has been very clear with the market that we intend to participate in circular activity. We've provided Netifem an exclusivity arrangement with uh, Irrigation Pipe um, because they have presented themselves as serious players in the circular economy. The used drip lines are shredded twice and then washed twice, a process that separates any silicon from the plastic. It takes about an hour to move one tonne through each process before it emerges in its pelletised form. All plastics are going to have to have a sustainability story. If you use plastic to make a product, you will have to be able to use it again to make the next product in the next five to ten years, otherwise you won't be able to use it. From here, Netifem turns the recycled plastic into new drip lines. It's exciting that the next generation of orchards that we establish might be utilising that product that, uh, that was once out on one of our existing orchards. So for us, that's really exciting. If the farmer can do it smarter, focusing on increasing profitability, in increasing production with greater insights from a digital perspective, everybody wins. Sustainability is at the forefront of strategic thinking in agriculture as well as for leading businesses. And arguably, digital technologies are essential for long-term viability with customers, regulators and communities. Where does sustainability sit on your priority list? It is a priority for our members and it's a priority for the AAA. I had the pleasure of leading a government and trade delegation to the US in May this year. And what became really apparent was the amount of time, effort, investment the tech companies are making around sustainability and carbon zero goals. And in fact, recently in, in Canberra, we held a major event around tech and sustainability that the AAA ran. It just demonstrates that the industry is leading the economy around carbon, towards carbon zero goals. So we're doing a lot. Um, perhaps people don't know about it. We need to do more to get that, that voice out. Do digital technologies really have that much to offer to make our businesses and our nation's economy more sustainable? Well, the first thing, there's an old adage, if you, if you can't measure it, then you can't report on it and, and you can't do anything about it. So the first thing is that the digital tools actually measure what companies are doing and then can report on it. So that's the first thing, that transparency, digital tools provide that. But digital and, and innovation actually can actually drive the, the carbon goals of, of economies, including Australia. What we're seeing is the evolution of companies um, embracing the cloud. These cloud companies, whether they be data centres, which is heavy users of energy and water, right through to software as a service companies, they're all embracing those carbon zero goals. Where do you see the biggest possible contribution to sustainability from digital technologies? Look, there's, I think it's a combination. I don't think there's one silver bullet that you could say this is going to drive uh, goals to net zero 2050. I think it's across the board. Um, energy is obviously a major area where technology is coming to support the grid, support renewable expansion, support the load management. So technology is playing a huge role right there at the moment. But then as every company and every organisation needs to use cloud-based infrastructure, that side of the digital economy needs to invest and ensure that it's efficient and they're doing that. Thank you, Simon Bush. There's no doubt that before too long, AI and analytics will be as at home on Australian farms as sheds and tractors. But it won't only be gains in production that are brought about by digital transformation. The future will also include exciting new ag tech careers, as well as opportunities for farmers to commercialise and lift profitability. And that's where Farmers to Founders comes in. Rochelle Martin reports from Armadale, New South Wales. Running a farm is a big job, but like most farmers, Bill Mitchell wouldn't change his daily grind for anything. As a beef producer, he's focused on meeting target weights 
for target markets. Weighing our animals is critical. It's, it's, the, it's the key ingredient that tells us how we're going in our business because at the end of the year, it's, it's how many animals we've got to the specification and, and are able to sell at the right weights that's, that determines our bottom line. Farmers are often innovators by nature and motivated by amplifying his bottom line and simplifying the cattle weighing process, Bill came upon the idea for OptiWay. OptiWay is an automatic weighing system for cattle that, that's portable. It's all voluntary for the cattle, so it uses a, a lick block to entice them to stand onto a weighing platform. Their electronic tag is read. That weight and animal ID information is sent to the cloud using a satellite connection and it comes back down to us and then is made available back to the farmer on an on a app or a website. But having a great idea is one thing, realising it is another. To bring the dream to life, Bill sought out the services of Farmers to Founders. We're really attracted to Farmers to Founders because we, we do think it's so important that uh, there's a close link between a farm and, and these farm innovations. Farmers to Founders offers a fully integrated venture creation pathway, so was able to not just help Bill build the business, but scale it and provide a platform for growth. The program that Bill came into was really to help agri-food businesses like him to scale both in national and international markets. And so what Farmers to Founders does is provide strategic guidance to businesses like Bill. We provide one-to-one -one business coaching. You get access to our really broad industry network. We have global networks as well. Sky believes the key to Farmers to Founders success is based on understanding the real problems that farmers face and then helping them develop pathways, working together with tech providers to create innovative solutions that deliver real benefits. Being able to showcase these really inspiring producers that they're doing these fantastic entrepreneurial things is amazing, and, but it's all credit to them. I think we provide the guidance and support and really about building their, their confidence to sort of execute on what they're trying to achieve. With a broad scope, the Farmers to Founders Pathways program is able to assist producers, tech developers and research teams to take their ideas from early concept phase right through to commercialisation and scaling into national and even international markets. When I approached Farmers to Founders, it was simply an idea. I never thought that it was actually going to turn into a business. Farmers to Founders helped me through both of their programs. Through the two programs, I managed to validate my idea and turn the idea into a business. Malka's business idea, Limbo, is a recruitment app that she describes as being like Tinder for jobs. A huge focus is on showcasing that agricultural jobs cover a broad spectrum of careers. Agriculture isn't just a farm hand in a paddock and there's a wide variety of jobs, whether you study law, um, whether you study science, whether you did commerce or whether you, whether you come from a farm. And that's something really at the core of what we're trying to do at Limbo. It's that diversity that's at the heart of the program itself. Farmers to Founders as a startup themselves are really showcasing a different career path that people can take in not only entrepreneurship but technology in agriculture. Bill's business, OptiWay, is a case in point, having grown to include a facility in Armadale for assembly, IT and product support. Getting to this point now where we've got a facility in Armadale and, and units going everywhere and a few going overseas, it's grown to the level that we only sort of dreamed of a few years ago and, and the, the future looks quite promising for it. So is Australia's agricultural sector accepting of digital technologies and all they can offer or do we still have a long way to go? I firmly believe that Australia has one of the, some of the best agri-tech on the planet, but we need to have belief in that um, and the belief in that will bring uh, better policy, better focus and it'll bring more investment dollars because um, investment in agri-tech is very light on relative to other areas of the technology sector. I'm Andrew Coppin, the President of the Australian Agri-Tech Association, uh, or Oz Agri-Tech. The association is the commercial voice um, of the Australian, Australian um, agri-tech ecosystem.
Aaron Edmonds, uh, Managing Director, NetFM Australia, New Zealand. Digital farming or digital agriculture is, is the next frontier. Uh, it's it's revolutionising uh, agriculture as we know it from a productivity perspective. We've really got a, a global imperative to feed a few billion more people uh, by 2050, which unfortunately is not very far away. Um, so as while other areas of technology may come and go with um, inflation and consumer trends, the imperative to feed the world is not one that we can ignore or put down just because economic times get harder or circumstances change. We had a session uh, a couple of years ago to be very defined on what sustainability, one, means to us and two, means to our customers. So what it means to us is uh, innovation. We need to continually innovate. There's many different ways where it can impact um, our um, economy both from uh, helping farmers be more productive and profitable with their time and their limited resources. And that, that can come in a variety of guises. It could come through robotics. It could come through growing better plants or animals. It could come through nurturing soil better, um, or it could be supply chains um, impacts and things that happen between when the product leaves the farm and gets to its ultimate destination. There's a lot of smart people doing a lot of smart things. Uh, a lot of startups right around the world uh, looking at uh, different sensor technology, different imagery technology, um, some leaf sensors, some trunk sensors, some soil moisture sensors. There's lots of things happening. And increasingly a lot of those things are also revolving around um, a climate a across how we can run more efficient farming operations and more sustainable and resilient farming operations without producing more carbon. The production output increases and the reduction in water use and fertiliser use, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, uh, more than balance out and it's a, it's a profitable way forward. A, a plethora of companies that are working on how to make farmers' lives more efficient and use their time more wisely because um, I've never met a farmer with time on their hands. I think Aussie farmers are, have been, um, you know, a, very willing to, to consider new and other technologies that will help run their business um, and agri-techs need to do a better job of ensuring that they help the farmers understand the true ROI of what they're doing. This is uh, a potentially a $40 billion a year enterprise for Australia. Uh, we think that um, it's already well on the way to making very material contribution to Australia's um, internal produce and that we should be exporting um, over $20 billion worth of technology a year into the world market, which at the moment is, is about a $700 billion a year market um, in um, agri-tech goods and services sold. Um, so a huge opportunity for Australia to become a world leader in agri-tech exists but we need investment, we need policy, and we need belief that um, Australian Agritech can and will be the best in the world. In our next episode, we report on digital innovations designed to improve our health and take our appreciation of good Aussies sport to a whole new level. Meanwhile, you can review any of our episodes and reports on the AIIA website. I'll see you again soon.